Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the All Systems Go podcast. I'm your host, Chris L. Davis, founder of Automation Bridge. And I would say you are you all are in for a treat, but I'm actually in for a treat today. um, I have someone who is going to help us understand the power and the possibilities of using no code to build your business. And, and, and this is an individual, he's not on the screen for a reason because I don't, I I don't want to have a spoiler alert. Um, but he, he is somebody that in the, the community and the membership that we have, his name comes up at least, at least once a week where we're mentioning, Hey, have you heard about this new air table update? What is this smart suite thing? Hey, look at softer. Did you check that out? He is our in the community from afar, resource for all things no code and he has come on to the podcast today none other than gareth (laughs) and gareth is he started working as a no code airtable consultant in 2018 after getting laid off from his corporate job hey raise of hands hey here too um and in the years following he grew his consulting agency to over one million per year by focusing on online courses, training, hourly support, and custom development. His agency leverages YouTube to provide value and generate leads for the business, and he's known as one of the leading subject matter experts. I I, I wanted to say small business for for some reason. Subject matter experts for Airtable and similar no-code tools. Um, I have to insert right in the middle of this this bio. I am a religious watcher of these YouTube videos, by the way. So if you're not subscribed, we're not even in it, Gareth. And I'm telling them anyways, um, <laughs> get now. Gareth is teaching others about the strategies he implemented to scale his agency. His second brand built to scale is breaking the barriers for other consultants who want to drive new leads, become known in their niche and ultimately drive value for no code users. Gareth, this that is I didn't say your last name, Gareth Pronovost, everyone, just in case you're you're listening on the flight. Like, I wonder if this is Gareth. from Yes, this is Gareth Pronovost. <laughs> Gareth, welcome to the podcast, man. Great to have you here. How you doing? Oh, Chris, uh, this is an absolute pleasure. I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me. Yes, yes. Now, now I'll start off by saying this. I, I need to let my listeners know I was tempted. See, I've got a green room and Gareth and I were in the green room and I could have I've got so many questions, so many questions, but I saved them for the podcast so I yeah. could be an active listener just like you all. So everything we're about to hear <laughs> from Gareth is going to be new to me. I do not have the inside <laughs> scoop, everyone, but I think it's going to be super valuable to have someone like himself really help us navigate this no code space. So, so Gareth, you were, you were at a corporation and got laid off. Tell me a little bit of, about life before being laid off. What, what, Ooh, what were you, yeah. what capacity were you working? In? Well, about five years before I was laid off, I was uh, st- a struggling entrepreneur, struggling solopreneur, never never really was able to get my business ideas off the ground. Mm. And uh, they ranged from manufacturing to, you know, some tech ideas, things I wanted to build, uh, just generally curious about life and, you know, just... <laughs> overall right i want to i see all these opportunities to make things better and i want to do all the things right yeah so that was that was me five years ago um and after another you know we we can say failed venture uh, because yeah yeah it's exactly what it was after another failed venture i said okay you know what i have to be responsible now and, and go get a job i have to i have to do the the right thing uh obviously i I've got something, something's not clicking for me on this uh, small business ownership. Mm. So uh, I went out and, and actually a friend of mine through my college had, uh, he was the director in the San Diego. This is when I was living in California, San Diego's small business development center, which is uh, SBDC for short. And they are a branch of the small business administration or SBA. Mm. And he said, Hey, I need somebody here to, to help consult with, small business owners or interested parties and you know people who want to start their own small business. And I said, 
well, you certainly don't want me. I, I just, you know, failed another business. <laughs> and he said, I bet you learned a heck of a lot more when you mm. fail than, uh, than you realize. Wow. Uh, I know you by reputation and, you know, a few conversations. Why don't you come in and work for me? So that was, that was kind of my intro to consulting. And I got to tell you, the first time I sat aside, you know, or sat um, opposite somebody wanting help, I, I was like, I felt so underqualified. I mean, the imposter <laughs> syndrome was, you know, I'm sure everybody can relate to this, right? Right. But I, was, I, I remember just thinking, well, if I can help them with one simple thing, right? If just one thing, then their time won't be wasted with me. And that became my mantra that I still repeat even to this day. But mm. then my, uh, my fiance and I decided that we would move to Denver. And I let that job go, even though I loved it. And found a job in... Uh, in a, a, for a payment processing company, very similar to Stripe, like a competitor of Stripe. Okay. And I was the sole financial analyst for this company and they did a hundred million dollar private equity investment. And I was super stoked and we were acquiring all these companies and bringing them into our you know payment processing. And, and then you know, everything was going great. I was an Excel wizard, uh, you know, living mm. and breathing in Excel, like so many, you know, financial professionals. Yeah. And then just got laid off one day unexpectedly. Came back from lunch. Uh, my boss called her, called me into her office, and she let me go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Totally stunned because uh, I yeah. thought I was, I thought I was crushing it. And so uh, I did a little bit of contract work, found Airtable in the midst of all this, and thought, why isn't anybody talking about this tool? Yes, you know, I went yeah. to the same place. I think most people you know, who are our age plus or minus, you know, five years go when they need to understand how software works. I went to YouTube and there was nothing, <laughs> just nothing. like, yeah, it was like a, a deserted wasteland, right? Of yeah. you know, in terms of, of Airtable content. And I thought, well, certainly something's getting missed here. Put together a YouTube video, which was terrible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you got to ship, right? You have to yep, ship. You got to ship. So it. I shipped. And before I knew it, people were calling up and saying, hey, can I get on your calendar? I want to talk about how you could implement this for my business. And uh, the rest is history, man. Oh, man, I love it. I, You know, I'm going to overlay some of my timeline. This was around 2018, 2019 for you. That's when the layoff yeah. happened. Yeah. 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 So I believe you and I discovered Airtable around the same time. And oh. I, I remember you. Oh, my gosh, Gareth, I had Greg on the podcast and I didn't even mention this. You just brought it to my memory. There was a post, um, Greg Hickman. He was, I was in his, his on his Facebook page in his group and it was like, Hey, what are the three tools you can't live without? Mm -hmm. So in, in regular lurching fashion online, <laughs> lurking fashion, I I'm going through and I'm just like, huh, what are people saying? And Airtable came up like five times. I'm like, what the heck is this? Well, I've never heard of this. Then I go to it and I'm like, oh, fancy spreadsheets anyways. But then like I read more comments and so many people and I was like, maybe I should try this out. So I end up um, signing up and everything. And at the time I was at Active Campaign as a director of education. And I remember when it clicked for me, I was like, oh, wait a minute. I get it. Columns are like custom fields. Rows are records. It's not the same as a spreadsheet. This is amazing. Look at what you could do. <laughs> and in in just so pure excitement, I just go and I'm throwing it at everybody. Hey, we should be using this. And Gareth, if I could go back and see how people were, they trusted me. That's the thing. They did trust me. I had a lot of people because I was a director of education and I I knew my stuff. They were like, okay, let's use this tool. If I could go back now, some of those Airtable databases were probably just shameful. Just. <laughs> They were probably the worst. You know, when I look at what I know now and I'm not even like of the greatest, but I just understand it a lot more groups, views and everything else. Yeah. I wasn't using any of that stuff back then. It was just yeah. like a colorful spreadsheet to me that, you know, you could do some other stuff with. So right. Excuse me. Right around the time where you were discovering putting content out on YouTube. Here I am discovering the same tool and trying to get it get some adoption internal, mm -hmm. you know, to, to the company that I was working for. So for me, when that stint ended, that's when my, I mean, air table, it, it, when I had to use it for my business and my livelihood, oh my gosh, it, it just took off. 
it it took off yeah. and I don't I don't know what I would be doing and who I would have had to hire and how much money I would have be I'd be spending out without Airtable, man. Really Thank don't. you. Right. <laughs> so here, the thing is, it's it's so it's almost ethereal. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how to describe it, and yet I use it. And in one of the you know probably one of the leading experts on this tool, and yet. I mean, you know, for the longest time, I, I kept hearing people say Excel on steroids, right? Yeah, Which I don't really yeah. love that, but no, okay, that no. I guess that kind of describes it. Yeah, but it's more than that. I mean, ultimately, it, to your point, it looks like a spreadsheet. So when you first start, <laughs> you're like, "Oh, this is familiar and nothing fancy. What's the big deal?" But what it really allows you to do is build a custom application to manage and automate any workflow imaginable. Yeah. And you can do it all without knowing any code whatsoever. Yeah. So once it clicks and you've, you, it takes some time for sure. It does. You've got to play with it. You have to experiment. Once it clicks game over, you will love no code and be an, <laughs> a, you know, an evangelist just like we are. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and that's really the topic. Listen, everyone, I'm on my best behavior because at any one of these topics that we talk about, I could just nerd out with Gareth. I, I promise you, I am using all of my discipline, my self-control, not to keep going down this air table hole. But I want to I want to uh, keep the focus on no code, because though you are, you you know, you say one of the but I, I I'm, I'm going to give you some flowers here um, based on when I search air table. And the amount of videos that come up, the quality of the videos and the quality of the content, I do not think there's a comparison. There are some people that do really good jobs on on, on YouTube, but, you know, you, you have to give credit when credit's due and, and, and go buy the, the flowers, no matter how much they cost <laughs> to give them to the people while they while they deserve them. Um, so I, I want to take my hats off to you because I know that level of effort of being consistent with any form of content, any form. And one thing that I've enjoyed about like seeing your um, evolution is that you you made a name definitely in the Airtable space, but you're really no code that mm. if 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 we were to put a very uh, um, more global appropriate tag on you, you're no code through through your videos. I learned about softer. I learned about smart suite. I learned about a whole bunch of other stuff that was too complex for me. So I want to talk about when for you, Gareth, when did you realize that no code is going to be the way to run and grow a business? Because you had these failed efforts before. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like did no code give you that new that new drive and say, oh, this is what I was missing. Like, what was it about the no code space and has it, how it evolved that really made it click for you? Well, I think one part is, you know, shots on goal. You, you're not going to you're not going to score unless you shoot. And, yeah. you know, yeah. a lot of my past was learning the wrong way to do things <laughs> so that I could figure out the, the right way. And unfortunately, with entrepreneurship in general, my opinion is th- there's no shortcut. You know, yeah. you've, you you got to go through the trenches and get beat up a little bit um, and yeah. develop the skills and the thick skin that you need in order to play this game. So that's part of it. Um, but the other part is, I mean, to your, to your question about time, I'll tell you, as soon as I opened Airtable and saw what it was capable of, uh, you know, you mentioned earlier that you're a, a, an engineer uh, for, or from mm-hmm. an engineering background. Mm-hmm. Like my undergraduate degree is in applied math. Like how nerdy is that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm the guy who grew up playing with uh, Lego and, you know, you, you could just leave me in my room for hours and I would build whatever. <laughs> and, and still to this day, I, those character traits, those are the same character traits I look for when we were hiring new people to join our team because... It's the tinkerer who goes out and like wants to wants to see if this thing can break. How do I break it? Because that's when I know how good it is. So when I found Airtable, that was what I set out to do. Let me break this thing. 
certainly, certainly I'll have all these ideas, you know, flooding my brain of things I can do. And I'm like, certainly I can't do all these. There has to be a limit. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm able to solve them one at a time and, and realize that this thing might be as cool as I think it is. And so when, I mean, it was, it was a pretty short learning curve, frankly, mm. you know, uh, mm. all things considered, especially having come from an Excel background formula, the formula syntax in uh, Airtable is very similar to Excel. And so that was a short learning curve as well. Yeah. And, and, and another point, uh, not that this will help any listeners who have not already started their Airtable journey, but in those days, five years ago, Airtable was still in its infancy. Yes. And so it didn't have all these like features. And so it wasn't as overwhelming, right? If I yeah. picked up Airtable today, like, Truth be told, I don't know that I would feel comfortable <laughs> saying, I'm going to go out and consult people. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's become infinitely more complicated, but it's both, it's a double edged sword. It's both good and bad that, that yeah. we have advances in the, in the tool. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you know, like I said, you, you start there and, and I would imagine that's where the idea that wait a minute this is it when you could do so much without mm -hmm. having to write a single line of code 100%. the most you had to do is figure out a formula you can google and you know figure those out um but and you're able to start doing things that it's like wait a minute this is like an app this, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> right. We'd have to pay thousands of dollars, uh, you know, previously. So you you start to do use Airtable and 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 people are asking you about it. You're starting to, to meet the demand. And now you've got internal to your business. Now you've got processes, growing pains oh, yeah. that you have to solve. And there's other tools no code tools that you are using or used and are using to do so. Give, give our listeners some insight. And let me just say this. Um, I, I know we kind of jumped into no code, no code for those of you who haven't heard that term just means applications that don't require you to code. So I can do a thing that usually would require code without code. So that's what we mean when we say no code. Um, so for you, Gareth, um, give people insight. There's, there are so many people running businesses, agencies that have not hit the million per year. They don't know what the back, what can no code solutions do for me on the back end of it, right? Like give yeah. us some insight on some of the tools that, that, that you found um, along with Airtable that you used in, 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 um, to, to grow the company. So I'll keep it as simple as possible without mm -hmm. overwhelming. Cause this, yeah. I mean, we could, we could, <laughs> We could talk about, you know, dozens on, upon dozens of right. amazing tools, right? But let me break it down into what I consider the three main buckets for no code. Okay. I, I think you need a place to store your data. And you could use spreadsheets. Technically, those are no code. Mm -hmm. But the catch with a spreadsheet is you're not really connecting data. You're not linking it the way you do in a relational database like Airtable. Where yes. when I have, let's take an example of a project with associated tasks, those tasks don't live at the project level. They're, they're a different layer, yeah. uh, to put it in like layman's terms. Mm -hmm. And we can associate them by actually connecting them together and then infer or draw data up and down through that connection. Airtable is a fantastic database tool, but it's not the only one we use. We also use smart suite that you've referenced. Mm -hmm. Um, there are instances where we might want to use Google Sheets or Excel, but I would yeah. consider all of these to kind of fit that no code bucket. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's got to be a place to store the data. Yeah. Next, there's got to be a way to move information in and out from the other systems you use. Mm -hmm. Maybe you process payments in Stripe or QuickBooks or Xero. Maybe you send automated emails. <laughs> Maybe you have parts of your process that when people reach certain milestones throughout your business operations, there are different things that have to occur. All of those things, if they're repeatable, they can be automated. Mm -hmm. And you can build automation with no code, uh, which sounds too good to be true. It's one of those places where I thought, certainly I can't do that. In the early days, it was Zapier. Uh, yeah. We all relied on Zapier, but now, yeah. A lot of these tools have their own internal automations 
that save us from having to go outside the environment. So now I can build automations in Airtable, I can build automations in Smart Suite, but I do think that there's a need for some automation component. Sometimes you need to get more advanced than what the native database tool uses. So I love Zapier, I love make.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Then the front end, <laughs> how are people gonna access this data? How are they gonna interact with this business process? And who are they? Are they customers? Are they internal team members? So everybody has to have a way to engage with the process that's you know reasonable for their role. Mm -hmm. And so we need to build some sort of interface for that to be allowed. Now, again, Airtable has made a lot of new feature improvements. And so now they have interface capabilities. But you know, to your point, you brought up software earlier. That was one of the first tools that we used to uh, you know, actually build like a, a front end onto our data that lived in Airtable so that people mm -hmm. could access it. Stacker is another one. Uh, there's new ones coming out pretty much every day. Um, but, you know, a lot of different options for talking to your data and it enables you to build that way that people actually interact with it. Yeah. And and to give you all insight on some of these tools that he mentioned, l listen, you may have to rewind take notes or in the show notes where we'll link to all of them, but, uh, softer and stacker specifically. I remember watching a video, um, of yours and I'm, I'm easily everybody you would think because I'm in automation and how much I love Airtable, You would think I could just eat this stuff by the boatloads. Gareth, to be honest, I can only take in so much of, of like, <laughs> <laughs> air table knowledge at a time because yeah. every piece of knowledge open is so tangent tan, tangential to what I know. Mm -hmm. So it like it's, it's, it expands my brain faster than sometimes I'm ready. So I think if I was more ignorant in what air table could do, I could consume more, but you mm -hmm. could say something as simple as, Hey, you could link multiple records and this is how right at that statement. I'm like, Oh, Oh, I never thought about linking multiple records. Da, 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 da. And then my brain is, you know, just off. So what I learned, though, when I was consuming one of your one of your videos is I was like, what is software? What is this interacting with data? What does that look like? And everybody imagine, you know, you've got information in air in, in a database software and it's just stored in there. It doesn't have to be pretty because it's database data and and usually it's it's not good looking Airtable I think dresses it up the best you know but what if you just needed to see a certain amount of information at a certain stage of time or what if you wanted to give let a client or a customer get access to just a portion of that data at a time and create kind of like a custom portal that's right. where these tools like softer and stacker come in and I think glide are you familiar with glide um, yep, exactly. Yep. Glide, um, Glide is really good for the mobile uh, mm -hmm. experience. Yep, yep, yep. So these are all ex if if we we we're not demoing right now on the podcast, but I, I just want you all to understand you've interacted with apps that people have paid tens of twenties of thirties of thousands of dollars for these right. tools that Gareth is mentioning, maybe a hundred bucks a month, you know, around right. that price range. Ridiculous ridiculous <laughs> it's just amazing what's what's available here so all right let me let me recap it you've got somewhere to store your data um you've got some no code solutions to store the data then there's no code solutions to move the data from all of the various platforms that you're using so that they can talk to one another keep things in sync and then lastly was um interfacing or interacting with the data that's been stored and moved into uh, the three areas that you would qualify the no code tools in Exactly. Uh, the nice thing about Airtable, you know, Airtable is one of the first tools to market. And so they've made these improvements over time. And th so the features that I'm talking about here, we kind of identified in the early days that these three portions would be necessary to really build a no code app experience. Mm. But Airtable didn't have internal automations. They didn't have I remember. interfaces. I remember. It, you know, it wasn't even a, a glimmer in the CEO's mind yet or I. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, uh, it's been an evolution. Uh, and we used to have yeah. to rely heavily on third party tools. We still do leverage them, but now if you want, you could get that entire experience in Airtable. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, help, help me, and and maybe this will answer things for people listening to. Um, I often there. I I have two questions. I'm realizing. Let me ask them separately instead of jumbling them up. Uh, but I often wonder how to use particular tools in conjunction because there's so much overlap now, mm-hmm. right? So for instance, Airtable can do some project management, but then I've got a project management software. Do I still need to use the project management software? Or do I do everything in Airtable? And, and before anybody starts to answer, there is no one answer, one size fits all for this. It's literally how your team wants to wants to work. For my team, I'm more comfortable in Airtable with a lot of the processes at the point where it needs to be taken action on with someone besides me. I'll create a button, create a button, send a web hook out, catch it and then have it uploaded to to click up or something like that. (laughs) (laughs) Right. That keeps me in my environment. It helps them stay in their environment and things get done. So for for you, how how have you kind of compartmentalized the boundaries of your tools like okay this is where Airtable starts it ends here smart suite for this that you know mm-hmm. because if you all are listening gareth doesn't use just one it's True. okay it's okay <laughs> to have more than one no code platform even if there's a lot of overlap sometimes there's just this little use case that's different so for you where how do how what's your process in kind of dictating what one tool handles that a, that another one doesn't and what the handoff is like well smart suite in my opinion uh is going to be a dominant player in the marketplace mm-hmm. and for anybody who goes back and watches this podcast uh you know five years from now that they'll be surprised right just as <laughs> When I picked up Airtable in 2018 and it wasn't quite there, yeah, yeah. you know, it's like, God, it needed some work. Guys, that's where SmartSuite is right now, right? Mm. So the thing that I love about SmartSuite uh, beyond what I can do in Airtable is the way that it helps me also manage tasks across my team. I know it doesn't matter what solution or database I'm in in SmartSuite. Mm-hmm. I get to see, I have a place called My Work, a little section of the software that tracks everything that's been assigned to me. And so for task management, it raises, it, it, it wins hands down. Mm. So every time that I need something like, you know, uh, task tracking, I prefer to put that in smart suite personally. Okay. Uh, now that being said, smart suite is a new, uh, a new comer to the space. They are not, uh, they, ha- they, they haven't uh, expanded their uh, performance quite as, as much as Airtable has. Yeah. It hangs up every now and then. I have to refresh my screen mm. and slows me down just a bit. Uh, so for, for anything where I need you know, consistent reliability, Airtable wins for me. Got it. Today. But I think right that'll today. be changed in mm. six months. You know? So yeah. Good to hear. for me, that's, that's kind of what it comes down to. But... The other, the other thing to take into consideration here is, is how you're sharing your data across your different workflows and processes. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, without going too far in the weeds, uh, we build databases, either it's called a base in Airtable, it's called a solution in Smart Suite, but we generally build a database that is uh, designed to consolidate related data and interact that related data. In Airtable, I can't link one database directly to another, but in Smart Suite I can. Yeah. So that is another competitive advantage for Smart Suite. So once you know, once we're a little further down the road and they've solved these performance issues, uh, the way that you sync up data is going to be next level. So we'll see what the future brings. Yeah. Um, I'm also interested that enterprise seems to be the focus for Airtable where I, th- I see smart suite, maybe focusing on the SMBs uh, oh, a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how that battle unfolds. But at the end of the day, what it means for us as consumers is better no code tools because they're duking it out. So I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah, I love it, man. I love the only, the only time I get nervous is when one tool really dominates because it just, 
it, I just haven't seen that go well. They get lax. They stop listening to their mm-hmm. to their audience. Yeah. Let me ask you this. We've got a, a lot of our listeners use Zapier. Um, some of them may be familiar with uh, Make, uh, okay. formerly Integromat. And some, if they're super techie, have even heard of Pabli. OK, so mm. these three are all third. They're, they're integration software. I'll, I'll call them that. And you hook you. You use them to pass data from one tool to the next. So let's say you have a some CRM software and something is happening in another application that you have and you want to send that data over to your CRM software. Usually you'd have to code. Now you have these uh, third party integration tools that can go and say, hey, we'll handle that for you. We'll zap mm-hmm. it, Zapier. We'll scenario it. <laughs> Make it. <laughs> we'll we'll pab it. <laughs> she called it. Zapier really has it with Zap. Um yeah. I'm someone who has a all three accounts by the okay. nature of who I am and what I do. I'm in automation. It would it who who would expect any less, right? I should hope you have all three. <laughs> <laughs> right. However, I'm realizing that I do have use cases for each one. I want you mm-hmm. to share, you know, as you're as as you've experienced them and, and started to adapt them and growing your company, how did you start differentiating like when to use Zapier, when to use Make, formerly Integromat, or or something else? That's a really good question. Uh whew. It's a tough one to answer without I don't mean to get too much in the weeds here. So yeah. rein me in, Chris, if I if yep, I overindulge yep. <laughs> here. Um, so for us, as I said in the early days, there was no Airtable automation. So you had to rely on a third party tool. Yeah. And Zapier was the most accessible and it connected to the most things. It had the best integrations that you know you could just really quickly and easily plug in an API key, and now I'm able to send Gmail, right? Mm -hmm. So super simple. And I loved that because I frankly didn't know what the heck I was doing in the early days. Yeah. So uh, so some might even say even today. So, you know, (laughs) picking up these tools, uh, Zapier will always have a special place in my heart because it it helped me understand how these tools work. And it it allowed me to build automation with training wheels because Mm. you can't break it. Like Mm. they have thought of pretty much everything. And if you go step by step through an automation and it works, that's it. Your automation works. You're good. You're gold. So I still love Zapier, but, and this is, you know, I'm giving you current stuff here. Yeah. I I feel like they're starting to price gouge a little bit. Mm. Um, It's getting pricey and I don't know why, like, the service hasn't gotten any better. I'm still building the same automations. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm okay with, you know, rising rates of inflation or whatnot, but we're talking double, triple prices on a lot of our customer accounts. Wow. So we've started to pull into make a little bit. Make.com, yeah. as you said, formerly Integramat. Mm-hmm. Um, strictly from a cost savings perspective. The issue with make, it's... It's like an auto, in my opinion, it's an automator's dream. Yes. But you have to know what you're doing Ooh. because, oh man, it's, it's just, it's not, they don't have great documentation. Oh man. Uh, a lot of stuff can go wrong. <laughs> so if you haven't done it, if you haven't put in the time, it's, it's a tough one to start with for sure. Yeah. But it's going to yeah. save you literally hundreds of dollars a month if you're comparing the two tools. Yep. So, yeah. I have to I have to jump in there and agree with you, man. I make is I have this strange relationship with make that sometimes what is usually pretty straightforward at Zapier that I'll do and make takes a little bit more to get done just because how they handle it. But it's something about like figuring it out and seeing that scenario run without error. That's like so (laughs) rewarding. It's it's, it's it weird, is. man. Like I should not be feeling good because you made it more complicated. But the tinkerer and engineer in me is like, yeah. you're giving me an, a feeling of figuring something out. I've achieved something using this. So let me let me tell you, listeners, if you have never heard of Zapier or Make, if you're going to get started, I highly recommend Zapier. It's more user friendly. The UI is is there. I know I've got a lot of techie folks and engineers 
the and I sh- I should say professional in the science, technology, and engineering, STEM professionals in mathematics. I know I've got a lot of STEM professionals listening too. You can handle make. Let me tell you, you can handle it. And I know your brain, you're looking for a challenge. You want to conquer it already. Okay, go ahead, dive in. It's a fraction of the cost of Zapier. At the end of the day, we're not telling you this to get super techie and nerdy. We're telling you this because there's going to be a point in time in your business that you're going to have to get data from one platform to the next. So all roads are going to lead to you using one or or two of these these uh, platforms, you know. You know, and I, I, I realize that this is probably like your mantra as much as it is mine, but automation opens up everything. Like, I, if I could rebrand <laughs> myself today, Chris, it would probably be, I'm an automation consultant. Like, let, let me just do that because yep. the value I can, like, it, it's, it's so simple, but the value is I build an automation that saves me five minutes a day. What's five minutes a day, right? but it adds up like to the point where, and I've done the math, it's like 20 hours over the course of a year. Yes. That's insanity, right? Like for five minutes saved. Yeah. So if you learn how to put an automate, how how to build automation in no code, the amount of work that you will be doing, or maybe I should say the quality of work that you'll be doing is going to increase substantially because you're not doing the copy paste, the, you know, move data from here to there. And I see so many professionals still to this day working in that environment. And I think I'd be one of them if my boss hadn't undervalued me five years ago. So thank you to her. And, uh, (laughs) you know, but, but, but heed my words and learn automation if you haven't already, because it, it will change your life and the life of your clients if you're so inclined. Yes. And, and I have to, Piggyback on that, of course. Why would I not? Um, But two is in every one, two, three, five minute task that you save is the potential of saving more time and making more money. Okay, that's there. Here's the flip side, everyone. And I need you all to get this for every one, two, three, five minute task that you do that could be automated. You run the risk of wasting hours. It may seem simple. Gareth, how many times have you said, oh, I'll just go in and I'll do this? It's a simple task. It doesn't take much. And while it's fresh on your mind, you're doing it. You're clicking that button. You're doing X, Y, Z. But what happens when the human brain kicks in our busyness, fatigue, and you forget to do that little bitty task that took one minute? Now it's going to take hours to recover or something else. You missed an email that was supposed to go out. Oh, the appointment didn't auto accept, you know, things like that. So it's something that you all automation is not a buzzword. And I, it, it has become a bit of that because everybody's jumping on the bandwagon, but it literally is. I don't want people to just think, Oh, I can automate millions of dollars in. No, 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 no. You, you can't do that. Don't get me wrong, but you'll get more out of it when you start to appreciate the minutes by the mm-hmm. ones, twos, fives, tens, twenties, and hours that it's going to save you at one time or accumulatively. Can I give a quick example on this? Yes, absolutely. I, just today, I meet with, uh, with my, uh, ex- uh, my virtual assistant today, and we just came back from a conference and we were learning about AI and thinking about all the different ways that we can incorporate AI into yeah. our business. Yeah. One of my assistant's tasks is to take the video that we make for YouTube and to write up let's call it a show notes or like a, a very mm-hmm. concise blog so that when we embed the YouTube video on our blog, we have some verbiage there that's going to help with SEO ranking and, and whatnot for our, mm-hmm. our content. And so we decided we need to build an automation where we take the text file of the words spoken in the, in the YouTube video, send it to chat GPT, and ask ChatGPT the same prompt every time. It's the same thing we want every time we do this process. Mm -hmm. Please write, you know, an SEO rich blog for me that, you know, summarizes this content that we, you know, that we discussed in this video text and, uh, and make it, you know, less than a thousand words or something like that. Mm -hmm. So this is a process that, you know, took my assistant, we produce three videos a week, right? 
Uh, this takes my assistant at least, you know, 15 minutes to 30 minutes every time. Yes. And it's going to chat GPT now, <laughs> which is like, this is a whole other level of automation, right? Because we're right. talking about AI. So don't be overwhelmed if, if you haven't started down this rabbit hole yet. But yeah. I'm yeah. telling you, the, 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 the minutes saved become hours more quickly than you'd expect. Yes. And, and the consistency of the quality of output. <sighs> it's just unmatched. I, you know, see, this is the problem. This is the problem, everyone. This stuff gets me going. So, so what? What I can? And I'll speak for you, Gareth. And and if I'm out of out of line, you just say, "Hey, that's your that's your thing, not mine." Um, <laughs> if we could bottle it up, package it up in a gift, and ship it to each and every one of you listeners, it would be to experience one of your most critical processes being handled accurately by automation, by technology, I should say, being automated by technology. That's the best way that you can experience. And some of you, what you're doing is you're just buying software and saying, I'm ready to automate. And you're bypassing all of these processes. If you if you just had somebody, you you have people, if, if you're listening, you have help. Gareth is about to explain where you have additional help from him in a minute. But if you just were able to slow down, talk to somebody who could say, hey, look, this process is really important. Mm-hmm. This, we've got a couple tools. Let's do this and let's get that executed for you. That's all. That's all. I. I that's the gift, Gareth that I want to get so that they can experience it and it doesn't become just a buzzword or a thing that everybody's doing, but something that they've experienced personally and can say this thing right here. I, I don't care how much it costs. Don't stop doing it. (laughs) Never turn this off. You know, that's why the majority of our clients have been long-term clients. You know, Uh, they, they sip the Kool-Aid and before you know it, they're, they're hooked. And they're like, oh man, this, the efficiency, the amount of money I spent hiring, you know, your agency, Gareth, uh, to build this process, streamline our stuff, uh, more than paid for itself, you know? Yep. So we're, we're willing and we're happy to, to do it again. And I mean, to your point though, if I could bottle it up, I would, man. I, I would in a second. <laughs> And I mean, I've tried, I've tried to create courses for this and, and I I try to teach as much, you know, free stuff on YouTube. And it's like, try this out guys, try it. But, uh, I feel like I've been shouting it from the rooftops and, and like only a select group of people are hearing it. And I, I don't know, man, maybe it's my delivery. Sorry guys. Let me know if you know what I'm doing wrong. (laughs) Please let us both know, because I, I know that the adoption of automation is, is on an uptick. I just mm-hmm. think that people aren't, they're not as process oriented as they need right. to be. They're skipping steps. And, you know, if there's not a process, there's not much that we can do to automate if there's no process and then the output is is less valuable. So um, in, in closing, Gareth, I want to um, put a put a bow on this uh, growing your business. No code there. So you've got your 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 three compartments of of no code software you're leveraging it internally you gareth just gave us an example of of he hey uh va let's take this send it to chat gpt let's put some automation in place so you're doing it internally to make things more efficient um what would you say and 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 this is right on the fly everybody listen this was not a prep question by the way what would you say looking back at your growth and if you experience hockey stick or whether it was linear, whether it was mountains, um, what would you say was the pivotal point that really unlocked the business growth for you? Was it a particular thing, Legion play? Was it you leveraging the tools internal to your business? If you could, and I know it's hard because there's so many, nothing happens in isolation, but from your experience as the founder, the visionary, and the one responsible for the direction of the of of the the company, what was that time where you looked and said, "Wait a minute, this thing is working. This is mm. it." You know, it is so hard to to pick one thing, mm-hmm. right? And, and and I will answer your question the yep. way you asked it, even though I hate the question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I will answer it, but I want to say that there have been multiple 
times, like we went from 10,000 a month to 50 and that was mm. insane. Mm. Like, Oh my God, we did 50,000 a month. That's, yeah. we can't do that again. Yeah. And then we went from 50 to 80 and then 80 to most recently 140 or 137 last month. And I'm just like, who are what we? Is, how, how what is going on? on? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> The, the biggest thing for us mm -hmm. has been division of labor within the company so that mm -hmm. people have the thing that they are good at and they do that thing and leveraging systems. Mm. Listen, that was a mic drop right there, Gareth. <laughs> division of work. And I, I, I want to say this, everyone. I'm on the record, Gareth, that I am anti-solopreneur. I don't think it exists. I don't think it should exist. I think that it takes a multitude of hands and heads to mm -hmm. get to where you want to get to. So when I hear you say division of efforts, what I'm hearing is, hey, look, these are the things that need to get done. Let's intelligently put people in place to do those things, not one person or two people to do all of the things. Exactly right. Listen, I, I like I mentioned, I, I do three YouTube videos a week. Mm -hmm. Absolutely impossible to do that <laughs> if I didn't have an incredible team keeping the other stuff going. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, I mean, there are so many other like nuanced answers I could give you, yep. like autonomy, giving giving workers autonomy to do their job and own their space. Yes. But, you know, I think the big the big takeaway is allowing yourself to say, as, as the founder say, I can't do everything and get where we should be or where I yeah. want us to be. Yeah. So you got to let go of it. You know, I'm, I'm sure everybody's heard the, the whole adage of if you can't, you know, if, if, if you can, you know, delegate it or, or what is it? Eliminate, automate, delegate mm. in terms of tasks. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think enough solopreneurs delegate. Yeah. Automate's great. Obviously, especially this audience, they're here yep. because they love this stuff. Yes. But a team makes you stronger. And I still resist it even to this day when it's like, should we add a new person? I'm like, oh, man, I don't want to, I don't want a smaller profit margin. And then I look at the numbers and I'm like, wait a second, we did, we did $40,000 more this last year because we added a new person. I think they paid for themselves. There like, you go. Yeah. Yeah. And the key, I will say this was the other thing that you said, systems. When you have systems in place, you know where to put those people mm -hmm. and, and, and it's already prepared for them. So it it's almost like putting someone in a position that's clearly defined where they're not just sitting there trying to figure everything out. It's like, no, look at this system. Look at the required inputs. This is what the output should be. Here you go. Right here. That's your system. You know, that's right. I love and it. And take it all the way back. This is what no code allows us to do. <laughs> So one of the big things we needed to learn as a company, as we grew, was that we could not, there's the, there's the saying about the cobbler who has the, the muddy shoes or uh, I forget yeah. exactly how it's it like goes, all, all, everybody has shoes except the cobbler's children or something like that. Yeah. Right. And so we realized pretty quickly, like, Hey, wait, we're, we're doing this amazing work for all our clients and we're not doing it for <laughs> ourselves. We've got to, we've got to reserve resources. And now we do. Uh, it, reserve resources to dedicate to build. You know, if you're not improving your own internal systems, how are you going to scale? Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. Garrett, this has been great. You know, I'm um, I'm going to have to have you come into the community and 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 do a training for us. I, I think that there's so much meat on the bone. Now, listen, everybody, you got this episode. No cost, no charge, but we, we, we need to get some members only exclusive content from Gareth. He's a wealth of knowledge. So we'll discuss what that what that could look like um, going forward. But in closing, Gareth, people have listened. Where are we at? People have listened to us for the last 50 minutes. Ooh. Didn't seem like it. Did not seem like it. They've heard Airtable, SmartSuite, Stacker, Zapier. Man, they've heard all these tools. No code. What? Oh, 30 $30,000 a month if I could just make five, right? They've heard all of these great things from your mouth. And they may be asking, how do I get connected with this guy? How do I find out more? How can I get started on my learning journey? Um, to that question, what, what would you answer? Well, let me offer two different options, two paths for folks here. 
Number one, if you want to learn Airtable and you know what, how does this thing work, how would it fit into your business, maybe the way that you assist your clients or, or the way that you do business in general, uh, I would suggest starting off with our Airtable crash course. Totally free. You can sign up. We'll go ahead and provide links uh, wherever you found this episode. Yeah. And that's going to help you over a series of days. We're going to send you an email a day for, I think it's like seven or eight days. And you're going to get all the fundamental building blocks of Airtable covered so that you kind of start to see how these pieces fit together. So if you're interested in learning Airtable and getting started, check out the Airtable Crash Course. If you're looking to get started as a consultant, you want to maybe dip your toe in the water of no-code consulting and offer some help to your own clients, check out our site Built to Scale. Again, we'll include some notes here. But Built to Scale is our second brand that's teaching people how we took this journey with no code. And uh, as one of the uh, early Airtable employees used to tell me, this is still the first inning of this game. So if you're looking mm. at this thing and you're late, you are not late to the party. No code is in its infancy, in my opinion. I think we got a long way to go before we have full market adoption. And I think anything short of full market adoption is going to be, you know, I mean, you're going to be uncompetitive in your in your industry if you're not adopting no code. So ultimately, I see the future of you know work as being everybody uses a variation of these tools. So mm. if you want to help set other people up with that, if you want to start building a consulting firm, like I said, first inning, get let's let's get invested now. So yeah, leave, thank you for that. that. Yes, thank you for that. We'll make sure all of those links are below everyone. And I really like that we're in its first inning. When I think of Airtable, it gives me hope um, for this podcast. We are in our last inning. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you, Gareth, for coming on. This has been a great joy. I'm greatly appreciative. I know our our collective audience is as well. So, um, again, thank you for coming on, man. And I, I, it's it's been a joy. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yes, absolutely. So thank you, listeners. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time and your ears and your attention. Everybody, everybody, make sure, make sure you all automate responsibly, my friends. We'll see you all on the next episode.